Previously on The Final Pitch. Investors, if you're ready, the final pitch begins now. iCargo Pacific will help you choose the best cargo option in just one click. So I'm asking here not as an investor, but basically a potential customer. I can be your integrator with our market. You haven't moved any cargo yet. Yes, we haven't moved any cargo yet. The concept is uh, there. But this logistic company, they can digital transform, right? You are asking 3 million pesos. I don't believe that that's, that's enough to complete your technology. So I think we can offer more. At Farmbox, how can we help? So you'll just buy farming essentials, nurture it, sow it, harvest, and help these farmers online. I live among farmers, and that's why this is very close to me. But this platform that you have is really not unique. Thank you so much, judges. So we will still be continuing to help our local farmers. This week, we find out how Dennis Anthony Uy carved his path to become the rising star in our country's digital evolution. And day one of the pitches continues. My name is John Aguilar, and I'm a serial entrepreneur based in Manila, Philippines. I've gathered a formidable cast of business and industry leaders looking to fund and support the country's post-pandemic solutions. Dennis Anthony Uy, co-founder and CEO of Converge ICT Solutions. David Almirol Jr., founder and CEO of Multisys Technologies. Rose Ong, Senior Executive Vice President and COO of Wellcom Depot. Bernard D., Visionary Mayor of Kauaian City, Isabella. And Jay Villarante, Chairman and CEO of Eight Ventures. Our goal is to find and support the new breed of heroes taking on the challenges of a post-pandemic future. Many will try, but only a few will make it to the final pitch. The saga of Dennis Anthony Uy began when he was born during a cultural revolution in China. His family migrated to the Philippines and he began his humble beginnings in the province of Pampanga. His passion for tech brought him to the forefront of another revolution, this time in the digital space. I migrated to Philippines 1978 because that's a hardship in China that time. It's a cultural revolution. And my uncle had a supermarket during the Vietnam War in Clark. So we came to Philippines and uh, I need to work with my uncle to uh, help the grocery store. You know? So clean up janitor, monitor of the stores. We need to maintain that walking freezers. This is electrical things. So I learned a lot in, in that early. I personally rewind the motors during that time. I'm uh, passionate about these electrical things. No? I got interest to repair. When I started this with Uncle Johnny Olds Technical, you know the first setup of rental Betamax there. You need to learn how to fix the machine too. I went to electronic course to repair everything. So when I can fix, you see the basic whatever, I charge the customer to fix because I have captured market. Then it's hard time, no parts. I bring them to Green Hills. I bring this one of the BHS, they cannot fix and they fix for me. And I saw the monitor of that technician. So many channels, that's a cable TV. Ah, see, I find where this signal came from, why you have in Manila, why we don't have in province. So I need to research. So I saw that technology already in the market. I said, I need to think quick. There's a lot of uh, policy came out. Copyright, you cannot do that. So I decided that I need to send it out already. I don't want to get trouble in this. That money came to the cable next. <laughs> Imagine I start only 16 channels and this antenna I put in my garage, in my home, in the roof. So we started that, suddenly eruption of Pinatubo came. People are so depressed in that area and it's about time I need to up deep the life of the people in that area. So we put that local channel for serving the affected area community. People, they thought I'm crazy, but I still continue to build my infrastructure to able to deliver houses. 
the government decided to develop the Clark as economic zone. We served the whole uh, Clark, but detailed, detailed development. I think 96, the first fiber optic started in Manitori. So finally, when Clark's developed and analysis developed already, gradually I expand the whole central Luzon by acquisition of the cable companies. When you come into Metro Manila, it's not easy. You back out on the big giants. Huh? It's challenging. So I went a lot of technology show outside the country. So this, you can learn a lot of newest approach and best practices in the industry, the individual countries, because you met a lot of people. And I saw one time, because Manila is the worst, especially in Makati, Quezon City, Ortigas, no one allowed you to leak because you caused the traffic. So finally, I met this guy from France called Mari Technology. They call micro -trenching. And this, I went to factory to see this, how they do it, maintenance, everything. I talked to the owner. They bring the technology here to teach my people, everything. And massively, imagine the whole Makati city, I finished two months. And you cannot see the disruption. I remember when I was new, Dennis asked me, so what do you like about my company? I said, it moves fast. And what do you think is not good about the company? I said also, it moves fast. But, you know, that has largely been taken care of, you know, so processes, policies, etc. are all in place. It does not prevent us from continuing to be fast. It just allows us to ensure that we don't make big mistakes. And now, as a listed company, that we are in compliance with whatever covenants we have with the government, with the investing public, and with the regulators. When you start small scale, you do everything. You're climbing the pole, you put the wire, you drive your own uh, deliver trucks. That's me. I, I do that when, when I'm started, right? But when you get the scale, scale already, you need to embrace something already. And especially now, in my case, that public company, everything should be in place now. We have 4,000 people now. So when you have that economic of scale already, you can put necessary measures. Dennis has always put a lot of credit to the emergence of Converge to its co-founder. He is none other than his partner and wife, Maria Grace Uy, who also serves as the president of the company. She put that system in. Without this proper system, you cannot be multiple branches. We got married, I think, in 97, 96, we know each other. No? She worked with IBM before, and she's a CPA, accountant. She's really good in controls. Mine is opposite, totally. I can say is she's contributed a lot because it's a perfect combination of loose control with the control. <laughs> you know, I've been this industry observing them well, no? That's why I got guts to come in to compete with these big ones, no? The Filipino consumers the longest been deprived to have better connection and better service. The market is so big, no? Why? In my end today, whatever subscriber acquisition I have right now, 90% of my subscriber today is the first time fixed broadband users. And I'm the first one offer no data cap to the consumer. People, detail by detail, they realize by word of mouth, oh, my, my broadband's so nice. The longest time they deprive and suddenly they see this kind of technology and they use, they're so happy. And that's happened to us in Converging Metro Manila. And that's why you go up so fast. And the market is really hungry, I tell you, in anywhere you go. You know, we were really trying to make sure that we can liberate as many Filipinos from poor and expensive internet. We would sometimes ask ourselves, you know, and each other, so how many Filipinos did we liberate today from poor internet? And that is what causes, you know, our culture to really be more of trying to serve customers. You know, Philippines is a very uh, lucky country. We are, we are in the middle of Asia. Imagine the opportunity in this country in due time that should be, become a digital hub of Asia. So the way I see it, you want to become that level to be competitive to others. You know? Love of the country is very important. The young generation train them how valuable the country is and 
how we can contribute each other, that can boils down to country success and everyone be success. That's I hope in due time that will happen. Up next. I have something that will benefit and interest you no matter what business or industry you're in. And I hope you can join me in this journey. This is very helpful. You know, uh, I remember when I was living in a squatter area in Santa Ana, I have to put all my, my things because I know that water will really go inside my room. Kicking off today's batch of pitches is a former OFW with a solution designed to address the flooding problems of commercial and residential establishments. Hi, Teresa. Hi, John. So, Teresa, you are here pitching a product that you feel everyone who lives in low-lying areas absolutely needs. It's not just those who are directly in low-lying areas right now. It's also my wish that everyone would look into flood protection solutions even before they're actually hit by flooding. I know of a lot of people who have been victimized by floods and it's always going to be happening every year. I'm sure that your solution is going to be the perfect solution for a lot of people out there. But the question is, will you be able to convince the judges to buy in to this idea? So, Teresa, you're up next. Good luck. Thank you, John. Hi investors, I'm Shriza and I'm seeking two things today. First is a partner, someone who can help us and is willing to tie up with Dime Easy to enhance our reach within retail. Second, we're seeking for an investment of 1.5 million pesos in exchange for 10% equity. Now, why am I asking for this? Because I have something that will benefit and interest you no matter what business or industry you're in. Dam Easy is a brand from all weather industries which originated in Ireland. Scottsdale Corporation was established in November 2018 for the exclusive distributorship of Dam Easy flood barriers here in the Philippines. So as we all know, flooding is a global issue and the Philippines is no exception to that. The Dam Easy flood barrier can be installed in three easy steps. So one, you position the barrier in front of your door reveal. Two, you extend the side panels. And three, you simply inflate the seal. It's that easy. So the Dam Easy flood barrier is quick, simple, and easy to install. It would take you approximately three to five minutes to install a single barrier without the need of any tools, brackets, or fixings. It has a unique inflatable and patented seal which surrounds the barrier, ensuring you a watertight seal. We're not just limited to doorways or just households, we can even help you protect wider openings such as garageways, warehouses, or even bigger. It's made of heavy-duty, impact-resistant, ABS plastic reinforced with glass fiber, and it has inner moldings of reinforced stainless steel, so you're really guaranteed a high-quality product. Imagine how many households, how many micro, small, medium, and large establishments can actually utilize this. It's my wish that hopefully one day, flood barriers would become a normal safety equipment in every household, in every business, just like how fire extinguishers are. And I hope you can join me in this journey. Do you have a distribution strategy already? Have you experienced any positive traction in terms of traffic to your company's website? Yes, Ms. Rose. Actually, we started off with the online platforms. After a year from when we started, there was an increase already of 240% in sales. This is very helpful. You know, I, I've seen a lot of uh, areas. Uh, I remember when I was living in a squatter area in Santa Ana, I have to put all my, my things because I know that water will really go inside my room. Are you exclusive for like how many years now? It's almost close to three years. So for the Philippines, we're the exclusive distributor. I understand that this is not your product. You're just reselling it, correct? That's why it's quite scary to invest to a certain company if there's no exclusivity. If you don't mind me asking, how much is the Dam EC uh, product? Yes, sir. A single unit of the Dam EC flood barrier retails for 69998 
wow, it's very expensive. Yeah. I but understand that most of the people who are residing in, you know, some areas that are frequent to, to flooding, they are not in good locations. I think uh, 69,000 is already a house for them. Did you also consider the geographic location? Not all parts of the Philippines are, you know, there are highlands, there are lowlands, no? So would you know the size of the market and uh, do you have any competitor or would you know if there, there's competition? Because this is something that can be replicable. Actually, um, as soon as we were granted the exclusive distributorship, we did our due diligence to actually study the market. We got all our information and data from agencies that has flood data available. So there's a huge market for it. And there is nothing like this flood barrier in the Philippines right now. At initial thought, they think it's expensive, but when they shop around and they see the difference of the barrier, they usually go back to us again. In terms of value or in terms of volume, how much units were you able to sell? Um, on our first year, we were able to help protect in terms of businesses, approximately more than 13 businesses, and that business, of course, is not just one barrier. We've also managed to help a lot of households as well. We know there is a need for it. There is a big market out there. Um, I just wanted to ask if you have uh, field jeps, if you're registered with field jeps, and if you have done any uh, engagements uh, with um, uh, local governments. We are registered in Phil Jeps Mayor, but um, we haven't done any existing projects yet with local government units. Okay, thank you. Thank you, judges. Thank you. Thank you. I was a bit nervous at first, but I'm very happy and feel somehow fulfilled that I was able to impart to the investor judges that we now have this flood protection solution in the Philippines. Just being able to do that, I feel fulfilled already. It's not so clear, you know, I don't know how feasible it is for any investor. I think this is a niche market, no? you cannot get mass base. Especially the DNE market no, is not easy because the price is not really affordable to residents. Yeah, for me, same comment. I was a bit excited at first because I was thinking, oh my God, this is a solution. That's why when I asked about the price, I was like, I'm going It's a nice product, actually, but um, I'm not sure if it's the right fit for our economic you know, segment of the market. Up next, a lot of them lack key services, so they are not tailored for cooperatives. Enter ARCs. This is a tremendous, tremendous solutions and really a positive impact to the co-ops. Our next entrepreneur is an expert systems developer who's trying his hand at creating the ideal online system for cooperative businesses. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Jack. So Kevin, we wanted you here, but you couldn't make it because you're in Baguio right now. Tell us about what happened. We wanted to go there, but the city basically closed the borders because of the threat of the Delta variant. You said to me previously that there's a lot of tech talent that originated from Baguio, but migrated to Manila and maybe to other parts of the world. What you're trying to do is trying to establish a local homegrown Baguio startup. That's correct. There are a lot of schools here in Baguio and they're top-notch. However, most of their graduates go to Manila because we have limited companies that actually get their talents. You're hoping to change that? If you have a successful pitch, I hope you are one step closer to making that dream come true. So Kevin, you're up next. Good luck. Thank you, John. Hello, investor judges. I am Kevin Philip Gaya of IOL Incorporated, the proponent behind the Advanced Robust Cooperative System, or ARCS, and I am here to raise 16 million pesos for up to 18% equity as part of our pre-seed round. ARCS, or the Advanced Robust Cooperative System, is an integrated software as a service solution for cooperative management and regulatory compliance. So co-ops are everywhere. Some of the famous co-ops include the electric co-ops, the transportation co-ops, the credit co-ops, and of course the cooperative banks. So they're contributing a lot to our economy. However, there's this stigma that when you are part of a co-op, it is mismanaged or otherwise they are scams. 
So we look at one of the reasons and one of the major reasons would be that they are still making use of manual processes which results into systemic risk and mismanagement. And to think this stigma has been persistent for quite so long, you would expect that there would be solutions to these problems. However, existing solutions are not really that good. A lot of them are not scalable, they lack key services, so they are not tailored for cooperatives, and therefore they are expensive. Enter ARCS, which is a cost-effective, comprehensive, web-based solution for cooperative management and regulatory compliance. So we've been working with our partner co-op in implementing this system. The features that they are currently using include the membership database, cooperative multi-user management, financial accounts, transaction and activity logs, which are very important in a co-op, and our latest addition, online deposit and loans payment. So what is our go-to market strategy? So first in our checklist would be to sign a MOA with the Cooperative Development Authority, which is currently in the works. Second, we plan to train 500 employees, members, and officers by December 2022 and hopefully convert them to become our first 100 onboarded users into the system. So I currently am leading a young group of tech and business professionals here in Baguio City and we are supported by the Idea Space Foundation, the Department of Science and Technology through their Startup Grant Fund and our tech partners include AWS Activate for Startups and the Send It Payment Gateway. We have also partnered with the Digital First Co-op, OCCC. Thank you very much for listening and help us ensure trust in cooperatives, help us build ARCs. This is a really wonderful solution and it definitely will create a positive impact. And this is something that we can easily champion or endorse in the League of Cities, for example. What I can offer is to push for this system in the League of Cities and also help in the CDA. You have very impressive partners, so keep it up. This is a tremendous, tremendous solution and really a positive impact to the co-ops. Actually, the customer acquisition, when you sign the uh, agreement with the uh, Co-op Development Authority, so you still need to enter with individual co-op in terms of customer acquisition, right? That's yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I think there's a synergy work on this on adjacent business because once you have full acquired these co-op members, and this adjacent business of mine, I have a broadband services throughout the Philippines. You can upsell on my product to reach your members. Or we can have my team to look into it and how we can do some uh, partnership. Definitely, sir. That's something that we are more than willing to explore. With your infrastructure, that would really help us also reach more potential cooperative partners. Do you know if cooperatives are also MSBs? For cooperative banks, they would have to register with the BSP. I asked because we have MoneyBees, which is a crypto exchange, and I think we can partner on that. Have you heard of Protopay? Because they're also part of our group, and I think we can do some partnership with Protopay. I'm not yet sure, but maybe I'm going to put in some money as well, but I'm not yet sure about how much. So I have to think about that first. But with partnerships, definitely we can do that. We're more than willing to look into these partnerships because we know that blockchain would be very revolutionary in the future and that's something that we would want to merge into the system. Thank you very much, dear investor judges. I'm more than willing to accept these partnerships and I do believe that it will definitely benefit the SaaS platform that we're building and of course the greater cooperative sector. Thank you very much. It was an awesome experience, but it was challenging. I am still quite nervous as of right now. I hope our local talents would definitely send their applications to us because we really need a lot of support as well from them. I think this is something that has really great potential because number one, it's not just a business. It's more of an advocacy also in helping and promoting cooperatives. Yes, but what I like I most about it is it promotes efficiency and transparency in cooperatives. And that's something that we're lacking nowadays. I think this would be a good opportunity.
for me, the CDA is on progress until now, right? So hopefully they got that uh, as soon as possible. Then the customer acquisition is another challenge. So if you have uh, this platform ready, you need to train these people, they need to use your system and if suitable to them. I agree with Sir Dennis. I think the system is going to be so large because the cooperatives are so different. And another layer of difficulty is the cooperatives themselves. We need to go deeper in the due diligence in the platform. That's very important. Yes. They're on the right track. Maybe all they need is uh, Sir Dennis Uy and Sir Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on The Final Pitch, we get to meet the man behind the fastest rising software solutions company in the Philippines, David Almirol Jr. And day one of the pitches continues. Consumers, they have new challenges right now. What we're offering is a unique solution in a huge and known market space. I'm sorry that we cannot be there right now because John and I are both COVID positive. I think that's one of the challenges that you're facing now. No? 